Since Bakhmud, uh, Prigozhin has been in the news a lot lately, and he gave this interview that's been making all kinds of waves. And I'm going to unpack just a four-minute clip of his interview and give you some commentary and hopefully provide some context. My name is Darren Gertis. I am a professor who tries to provide context in the war. And I think that even YouTubers who support Ukraine are getting it wrong because they're missing a piece of the puzzle. So... Prigozhin was saying things that, if you didn't know better, would sound pro-Ukrainian. And But if you know better, and when I say you know better, I mean this. So a couple of days ago, I did this video here on Prigozhin's secret sauce. And in that video, I was looking at an article in Radio for Europe talking about how um, Prigozhin is a special operation within a special operation. That is, he's working for Putin to be the gadfly, to say, to give Putin's message to the military or to the oligarchs or to whoever, this person or that person, this group or that, because Putin can stay above it and have a surrogate do his dirty work. Medyev functions very similarly being doing his dirty work. So if that is correct, then what you saw with this big rant the other day wasn't just that you know, here, here's what happened in Ukraine and we created this catastrophe and built them up. No, no, no. This is Putin's message. And he is allowed to embellish on his own record and, and make himself look awesome as long as he carries his boss's message. That's my thesis here. Now, I'm also going to say I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, challenge me, correct me, show me. I don't have a monopoly on truth, but I think that this is right. I'm on a theory. I'm not, I can't prove this, but... <laughs> Just watch this and tell me what you think. Okay, so we're going to go and look at the Russian media monitor. Thank you to them for creating this. This is this five-minute clip of Prigozhin, and we're going to start working our way through it and then just trying to unpack what if Putin is speaking through Prigozhin's words. Just watch. So I'm going to read his words. The special operation means bringing Ukraine into our pro-Russian fold. And many in Ukraine wanted to end up in this fold. Again, that's the first thing that Putin wants to communicate, right? That there's a lot of Russians there or Ukrainians who really want to be part of Russia. If we're creating a pro-Russian fold, we should change the top leadership. Kiss the people on the butt and ask them to come to us. And making deals with the elites. What did we do? We showed up disrespectfully. Our boots have trampled all over the entire country. Looking for the Nazis. While looking for the Nazis, we've done in whomever we could. We've reached Kiev, but then I said, stay plain. We crapped our pants and retreated. But why would Putin want to say that through his surrogate? Well, if he's trying to rebuke his generals, this is a good way to rebuke his generals publicly without him actually having to say that. Okay? So, <laughs> again, it's not that Prigozhin is saying, is, has turned pro Ukrainian all of a sudden. No. He's sending a clear message to Putin's subordinates, his general class, about his displeasure. We crapped our pants and then retreated. Then in Herzan, we crapped our pants and retreated. Before or after that, not sure about the timing. Izium, Krasny, Lyman, nothing is working out for us. Joseph Stalin would draw conclusions. He would have shot 200 or so people. Maybe he'd hang someone for his aesthetic pleasure. Well, why is he bringing up Joseph Stalin? Shouldn't Putin have done... No, no, no. He's showing that Stalin was like this, but Putin's a kinder, gentler version. He's, he's not going to be doing that kind of thing. But he should have done something because something is going wrong and you military guys are terrible. Notice it's the military, not Wagner. Wagner's fine, but the military guys, they're awful. Maybe he'd hang someone for his aesthetic pleasure. But with us, no conclusions have been drawn so far. The special operation was conducted for the sake of denazification and demilitarization of Ukraine. Ukrainians were just the former Soviet Republic. Okay, let me before I go to the former Soviet Republic line. Well, isn't can't, how could he you know say that there's we're the Nazis when Putin said it? But if it comes out that there are no Nazis. You just watch and see when Putin says, but they told me there were Nazis, and it'll be the line below Putin or the line below the line below Putin that will be getting the axe, not Putin. It never happens to Putin. He always finds a scapegoat. Okay, so the Ukrainians were just a former Soviet republic, he says. Okay. They had the Ukrainian language, and everyone treated them with respect. I beg to differ. 
Um, I seem to remember the Holodomor where uh, Joseph Stalin starved out millions of Ukrainians. So, uh, I don't think so. Including the USSR, the denazification of Ukraine we were talking about has turned Ukraine into a nation. Now, again, how can he say that? He seems to be promoting Ukraine. He's not. He's, Putin has consistently said there, are, there is no nation, but he's saying that it's turned them into a nation. So they, he's consistently, they never were a nation, but they're kind of becoming like one now because of this, because of this special military operation. Do you see that? Okay, hopefully this makes sense. That is known to everyone all over the world, like the Greeks when Greece, Greece was thriving, like Romans in their day. We And the commentator says, we legitimized Ukraine. Absolutely, we legitimized Ukraine. Ukraine became a country that is known everywhere. This was about the denazification. Now, about demilitarization. The, the uh, commentator says a painful question. Just ask the residents of Belgorod region. Demilitarization of Ukraine. In the beginning of the special military operation, they had about 500 tanks. Now they have 5,000. Well, why would he say that? So again, the, the pro-Ukrainian YouTubers even are saying this, that, well, you know, he's saying things that are, sound so pro-Ukraine. It's not pro-Ukraine. I don't believe so. I think what he's saying is, Military, you're bad. How could you let this special operation go so long and become this? Like, if you had done your job right, we wouldn't have this problem. Okay, they had 20,000 men trained in the fight to fight, and now, and now they have 400,000 men trained to fight. Now, this is also another key talking point for Putin. Putin continually says it's not just him fighting Ukraine, it's him fighting all of NATO or all of the West. Right? So this falls into Putin's narrative. Again, if you think I'm wrong, put it in the comments. Now they have 400 men trained to fight. How do we demilitarize it? It turns out just to be the opposite. We militarize it to the nth degree. Based on my own experience, I can say we have fought in many different places against many different people. We know how Americans and French fight. We know how useless, cowardly UN forces fight during their missions. We know how the African tribes fight. Today, PMC Wagner is the best army in the world. Okay, so he's tooting his own horn, and he's allowed to say that because he's. if Putin is rebuking the military, he's allowed to say that PMC Wagner is so much more superior. And he's going to go do that, and everybody expects him to do that. We've always defeated everyone and everywhere. Today, PMC Wagner is the best army in the world. To be politically correct, I'd have to say that the Russian army is the next in line behind it. I mean, he, okay, he's, he's smoking a crack saying that. <laughs> that PMC Wagner is the best army in the world, and then Russia is the best army. And after that, they kind of pants themselves on the world stage, but okay. But I think that today, Ukrainians are one of the strongest armies. They have the highest levels of organization and preparedness. They have high levels of intelligence. They have all kinds of weapons. And more than that, they can work with any system, Soviet or NATO. Okay, why is he saying this? And this is where the pro-Ukraine YouTubers are getting it wrong in my estimation. And I love them. I watch them regularly. I think they're all a great bunch of people. But I think that there's one little missing element of context. And that is that if Putin is saying things for a reason through... Prigozhin. It changes everything about the way that you interpret this. He's saying that Ukraine is this good, where we only thought that they were this good before. But he's saying that in the same way that a politician, before a big midterm election, let's say, you, you think it's going to be a blowout, so you say, it's going to be a super blowout. I mean, we're going to get crushed. And you say that so that you downgrade the expectations that you're going to do well. What's about to happen? The counteroffensive is about to happen. And I think this is Putin through Prigozhin downgrading expectations so that when in the counteroffensive things go very badly, it doesn't reflect that, that, well, it went better than we thought, I think is what's going on here. Does that make sense? We were going to get blown out. We're going to lose 75 seats in the midterm election, but we only lost 35. We, we, that's a glorious victory for us. That's the same kind of thing that is going to happen here in the future. Just, just watch. This is my sense of it from the things that I'm reading in Soviet media, RT, Pravda, that kind of thing. And I think this is where it's going to go. Okay, just... I, again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. 
but this is my theory. Okay, let's keep going. On any kind of systems within equal success, they view their casualties very philosophically. They're doing everything to achieve their highest goal, the way we did in the Great Patriotic War. But it's more technologically advanced and precise. Now, he's even comparing it to the Great Patriotic War, which is something that would be a big no-no unless it was sanctioned by Putin, unless Putin allowed this. If he was doing this, and like, remember yesterday I showed you the list of all the oligarchs or businessmen that had been killed, like three dozen of them or something like that, and falling out of hotels and committing suicide. I, he can't say this without a permission slip, and I think he has that permission slip. Okay, this is what we got so far as to the demilitarization of the Ukrainian army. That is why you said about the Belgorod region, yes, sabotage and reconnaissance groups are brazenly coming into the Belgorod region. Our defense is absolutely unprepared. Now remember, he can say that because he's not the general in charge. He's slapping at the general in charge. Our defense is unprepared. Well, he's not responsible for that. He was in Wagner. He was getting that glorious victory in Bachmann, right? While the generals, they're negligent on the border, crossing, the, you know, dealing with the border. Okay. Um, our defense is absolutely unprepared to counteract them. Sabotage and reconnaissance groups shouldn't be able to cross the borderline in any normal civilized country in, that's in the midst of a conflict with its neighbors. It's impossible to cross the borders. It was impossible to cross the borders of Syria with Turkey in regions where they were controlled or in any other demarcation line. But here from the side of Ukraine, which is our enemy, in times of what? What? He said in times of war. He said war. He should go to jail for 15 years. Just like Putin said war in his speech about two, three weeks ago. No, apparently the rules don't apply to Putin or to Putin's surrogate. Sabotage and reconnaissance groups are coming in with impunity, filming videos on tanks, on BMPs. Is there any guarantee that they won't come to Moscow tomorrow? If these groups come to Rublovka, then someone will perk up. But as for now, I understand everyone could care less about the Belgorod residents. Okay, so that is my thesis. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm going to do another one of these in just a little bit. So stick around. Thank you. In the meantime, for the likes, thank you for sharing this with others. Thank you for the super thanks and the coffees. I really appreciate it. Stick around. You're going to see another video very shortly where you're going to see Pergozin slapping at the oligarchs as well. You don't want to miss that. You and, and just listen to my case. In the meantime, before that comes out, watch this video on Pergosian's secret sauce. It's really important to understand.